many more groups than there are than there is, than there need to be for today. Um, I plan on having way too more. So um, if you want to make sure that you try and register a group or get an email list of three, <laughs> if you can. <laughs> <laughs> Groups of one are boring. So you're, not, so you're not a group of one. <laughs> what a great comment, Liz. Good job. <laughs> So it's interesting to me because the see mine says that there's still a couple of groups open. Or I mean like group two says two out of three students. So it's not it's not real time updates. Nope, there's three out of three.
little room I got. And that, and this, of course, and the evaluation thing. Who's already given the people an assignment. Oh. Chill, right? Yeah. All right. I got you checked in here.
happy to have some fun with your comments. You can insert images, you can insert videos. Yeah. 
up and you're still waiting for your peers to post something, maybe hit refresh and maybe they will have appeared by now. for now and bring it back to regroup. Um, okay, so for those of you that weren't here the other day, my name is Julie Johnson. Uh, I'm a graduate student in the EdTech department. I um, have taught several large lecture courses here at um, UW, mostly in the EdTech department, EdTech 320 and 321, Adolescent Development and Early Childhood Development. And I also work in the Um, so the session today, uh, just to give you a heads up, is going to be part pedagogy, part Canvas. Um, so you've already done some hands-on in Canvas. We are going to pull away from Canvas, Canvas for a little bit um, for an activity, and then we will dive back into Canvas um, today. So really quick, before we move away from the discussion, how was this? How did this go? Can you envision yourselves using this in your classes? How would you use it? What would you use it for? Was there anything frustrating? What do you think? Yeah. Well, I think just the viewing is the one thing I see from it. I can see it being used as a group to share when you write down what you're thinking and you can turn to each other and actually talk. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You could do that. So you could make it like this blended face to face slash online. Yeah. What else? I think in a large class, it can be difficult to get all the groups to communicate with each other. It's just a barrage of responses. Sure. I don't know how to manage that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, so <coughs> today you'll notice what I did was I requested you for you to self-assign into a small group, right? Um, if this was a large lecture of 100 people, you wouldn't want to just create one discussion board and have 100 people clicking on it all the time. Um, so that's one advantage of Canvas. Um, when you go to, and I'm just going to show you a little bit behind the scenes, when you go to create groups, you can allow your students to self-enroll like I did, or you can ask Canvas to automatically enroll students into groups of whatever size you choose. Um, and the way that you do that is you just create a group set and say you're Say you're creating small groups for a discussion, right? And so maybe a specific discussion. Uh, discussion number one of the semester. So here it says allow self sign up. So that's what I did for you guys. Um, but you don't have to do that. What you can do is you can instead automatically split, um, split your students into, say, 10 groups, right? Maybe think about how many students you have, how many students you want per group, calculate that out. Um, or if you have a smaller group and you want to be more strategic, you can select, I'll create groups manually. And then you, the instructor, would then create the groups. So there's a bunch of different options there. Um, and that's one way that you can really reduce the number of individuals that are in your group that are part of your discussion. Well, we have 16 in class. Not necessarily. That would be challenging to do online. You could you could redistribute them. And actually, one of the activities that we're going to do today um, will give you an example of how you could make groups and then redistribute them. <laughs> but don't worry, we'll get we'll go through it together. But before we move on, anything else about these online discussions? 
So one more thing just to address John's problem, um, issue of how do we do this in the classes. Uh, consider using Blackboard Collaborate Ultra because it has a text-based chat in it. And with Ultra, you can then actually get people going into their separate little group rooms and then pull them back at the press of your button so you don't have to wait for them all to come back. You just press a button and they all come back to you immediately. Is that Blackboard? Yeah, and that's available on Canvas. It's integrated into Canvas. Uh, I think Julie is turning it on right now. Ultra conference, yeah. So, Ultra Conference is the name of the tool. Blackboard Collaborate is sort of the older version that you might have been familiar if you've done any online classes with video. Um, Ultra Conference is a lot better at it. Um, it lets you do video conferencing, great for office hours, things like that, um, or for students to actually can create their own Ultra Conference groups for group projects as well. One other way of using it is for a much quicker real-time in-class chat. So today we noticed that in discussion we had to refresh a lot in order to see if results came back. Students are used to very quick real-time chats right now on their phones and mobile devices and computers and such. Um, this lets you do that pretty easily in a way that they are familiar with. And once you do it again, it's it becomes this is actually one that's much easier the second time that you do it, and you don't have to wait for the third or fourth time to do it. And what I what I can do is I'll create a uh, a worksheet and we can add it of of uh, what these things are, some links to learn how to do that, and then I'll share them back at the end of the class in our uh, group space. Thank you. Yeah. So. Um... And the video would be chaotic in a classroom, I think, yeah, yeah. especially with speakers and audio going back and forth between people's devices. But if it were just a text-based chat, I think that that would be much easier to control. Yeah, 
sort of, I guess. Funny part of my uh, son uh, is uh, a special horse. Washington, and 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 Washington, Thank you. 
but it puzzles us and we want to get the answer. Yes. Uh, it's not always the case in a classroom with students. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Although I do think if you had a small enough class and facilitated this, yeah. two students would be pretty interested in this kind of an activity. Um, and, uh, and actually here on this slide, and I'll make these slides available for you, um, I have some other uh, maybe main objectives of interactive learning, right? So improving peer support and group cohesiveness. Um, and the idea of improving peer support and group cohesiveness is actually something that research shows improves academic achievement, right? Students who feel like they belong, students who feel like they're part of a group, uh, do tend to achieve um, academically. Uh, improve motivation, right? It might be difficult at first to get students involved in these kinds of activities, interactive learning group projects, right? Oh, the groan you get from group projects sometimes. Um, but if you facilitate them well, uh, in the end, your students, you'll see more motivation, um, increased self-esteem and confidence, improved attitude toward learning, and then increased willingness to develop time and commitment. Um, right? So again, if you facilitate these activities well, and you give them activities that are engaging. Um, are you one of the guys? I am not. <laughs> I wish I was. Thank you very much for asking. <laughs> I appreciate it. There's lots of Johnson. <laughs> All right. Um, so for this next activity, you um, you are each sitting at a table that is going to become a master of a certain topic. And your responsibility uh, as a table is to prepare to teach the rest of the class about your topic. Uh, so you'll actually flip to the second page of your handout for today. So on that second page of your handout, you'll see a few questions. This is going to start out uh, sort of as a think, pair, share. Um, so each of you is going to receive a relatively brief article. And I want you to each write down your own description or summary of this article. And then, we're going to get creative. I want for you to draw an image that you think represents or symbolizes the article that you and once everyone at your table is done, you'll all come back to a group and you'll share what you created. And we're going to work on this for about 20 minutes. It's going to go over the break time, so if you want to take a break at any point during this activity, feel free to do so.
all be just perfectly clear. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and then I'll wear them all.
Very skilled in okay. Canvas, and we've got okay. a can, couple of Canvas um, contact go. people. Now's the time to so. share. What I'd like for you to do is to keep this to like 30 second elevator speeches. Okay, so don't go on and on and on about your summary and image. I'd like 30 second elevator speeches from each of you. An elevator speech is the amount of time you have to talk to someone in an elevator. All right? <laughs>
<laughs> so come try. <laughs> well, I went. I, I accepted, and then this is where we are. So we need to get permission. So we've just about figured out all of the different hiccups and stuff, but it, it can be a little bit of a pain in the butt, right? Easy enough with 12 people, much harder maybe with 80, right? Um, there are other ways of doing this by having them just click on a link and opening up one Google Doc that has many different sections. Um, as those of you who were here on Tuesday, we did with uh, some of the table activities. That might be one way to make sure that everybody's on the same page. But then you've got people working, you know, saying, oh, I like what table one is doing. Let's just copy and paste, and then we'll just let them do the work. Opening up some third-party things, such as Padlet, which doesn't require, um, Padlet might not be the right thing, but maybe it is, you know, having a board where everybody submits um, their idea on that. Um, could be a way to do that. Tricider.storming is another one. Um, so this is a really good experience, and this is really exciting for me to watch just to sort of see what the issues are. But there are other options as well. to use lots of different <laughs> applications. Yeah. Um, but what I like about using something that's built into Canvas is that it's much less confusing for your students, right? They're all in one place. Um, you're not sending them all over the internet. Again, it's entirely up to you if you find yourself really comfortable with other 
expectations, then absolutely, you know, choose your own adventure. Um, but for the most part, we have about what, 96% <laughs> of you guys are uh, able to collaborate right now. Um, my assumption is as students use Canvas more and more and they use Google Apps within Canvas, is that they're probably figuring out the glitch um, with, with Google, where they know that they have to have separate windows open, um, one for their list and one for their personal Gmail account. But it's good for you to know that as well. And as we saw today, like the students help each other. So once Paul figured something out, he was able to help Sarah, and and, and it goes on like that. And what else is cool is it looks like some of you are doing Google Docs and some of you are doing Docs. Yeah, we're online. Yep.
So Morton Gernsbacher does a lot of um, synchronous chat activities, and she has 
found that it's very good to completely spell out the directions of exactly what to do. And, and she gives everybody in the group a role, an assignment, right? So group number one, group member number one, your job is to create the document and invite the other two people. Group member number two, your job is to, I don't know, do a certain whatever. And group number, group member number three, your job is to respond back in a, a text to her, or not a text, but a, a, an email to her telling that we're done, and here are the people that were in my group. And it gives everybody an opportunity to have a specific role. They're all very clearly defined. And that's a probably a very good way of doing things to cut down on the amount of chaos. And if you could do that, like have you know those roles throughout the semester, that would be cool because it would be you know that first time where you're getting the bus out and then people are like oh I'm rule number one I know what I'm supposed to be well, doing. Well, she will have them switch because the actual writing the one of the tasks is harder than the other two. So one person kind of gets the oh my job is easy this week I only have to do X and person Y is like all right I've got stuck with number you know direction number two mm -hmm. and person number three is like okay that's not so bad. But she rotates them through right. that. Yeah, but I mean, everybody kind of know what the story yeah. was. That'd be, yeah. That would be great. And they can help each other yeah. navigate. Mm -hmm. And like anything else, the more times that we do this, mm -hmm. the more you get the hang of it. And the more they'll know. Yep. So what about the jigsaw, right? Starting out kind of in your own little comfort zone, feeling validated from everybody else's summaries, and then from there, going to your small group sort of as, your, as the master of your content area. How did that go? So the, the thing that I always kind of wrestle with with the jigsaw is um, I don't know enough about the other people's things to really engage with it as kind of what they're doing face value. So, I think there's there's a lot of value there. I always just wonder like maybe I can read read it but not have to summarize it with you then just to be able to contribute a little. Yeah. But I like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Um, so today I did it where I handed it out, you know, we kinda of did the face to face for step one and then step two we did online. You could do this entirely online and you could say, Hey, I've broken you up into groups of three. Um, the person with the last name closest to A in the letter of the alphabet would read Article 1, and then so on and so forth. And then from there, you all have access to the articles, and so if you want to go back and you want to make sure that you're getting the content straight out of that article on your own, you can do that too. Yeah. And making that shared space for that final jigsaw thing with a few different things are coming together, making that public for the students so that they can see here not only what you have to say, but then later on they can go back and see what do the other people in that initial thing have to say. Because I might not explain it in such a great way, but somebody else might explain it in a way that's better. And so this gets back to that multiple means of representation that we did, that we talked about um, for universal design. And it reinforces the content if they read it slightly, slightly different. This is also a good way to get content knowledge out there without having to lecture at your students, right? Yeah. And um, it's another way for your students to internalize the information, right? One of the best ways I have learned how to learn is to teach what I'm trying to learn, right? Being in charge of teaching something, um, boy, you're going to learn it pretty quickly. Um, having that social contract of, you know, other people's knowledge, you're being responsible for other people. Um, it's pretty powerful. You guys all dove right into this activity and took it very seriously. <laughs> so um, that's great. Um, it means that you really responded to that social piece. It is a complicated activity. It had the active element, it had the constructive element where you're creating your own understanding of things, and it had the interactive element times two where you can explain to your group and then to another group. So complex and great activity is hard. Yeah, and that first part of the, yeah, absolutely. And that first part of the jigsaw, you don't have to do, right? So you don't have to have the group, you know, sort of the master hub of information. You don't have to do that part. Um, I like to do that piece, though, because I feel like, especially for students, especially, I mean, first-year students, right? 
they're in college and suddenly they're in charge of teaching their peers about a certain content area, it really helps um, if they can meet with others first and get you know sort of the shared understanding and then become a master and share it with their, their peers. So it just depends. Um, you can read your student yeah. line up with something. Yeah. yeah, I think that would be a good one. Also includes the likelihood that they're like that we've now seen this tendency to even do get the first kind of respite from that conversation unless you're having a high school system that they're not very best right. Can you see doing something like this in your field? Articles. Yeah. Or policies. Yeah. Articles, policies, sure. Concepts. Did you say that this is all like the three different groups? Uh, does that mean you merge someplace so that we can see that? Mm -hmm. I do not have it so that it's merged. Oh, okay. uh, that was what I was talking about. That's the idea is to give them a separate group. Yeah. Yeah. And that's once you're in a group, you need to be outside group, which you can't see within there. Right. So it seems okay. it can be a pretty basic mm -hmm. level. Sure. Okay. Also, the clinical group is much more stick everything in one group. Because it's a little discussion. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, team member number four, now that your group is done, it's your responsibility to make your Google Doc visible to all the students in class and to post it to this group discussion board so that everybody can access it. Okay, so discussion board would be a good sure. place yeah. for the group. Yeah, you know, for the a whole class discussion board. Um, and that way, so like, for example, we have a lot of people here, but there would only be uh, four posts, right? Because I only three you end up with the four groups. Can we say, do that? If you guys want to, yeah. um, oh, let me, yeah. I'll create a group discussion really quick. So in case you missed that request, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a discussion really quickly. I'm going to call this discussion um, Share with the Class. And I'm not going to make it a group discussion. Means it's going to be available for everybody. <coughs> and now, um, if your last name is closest to the end of the alphabet in your group of three, it's your responsibility to copy the link that you were working on and paste it into this discussion board. The, the person at the very end of the alphabet? Yeah. Okay. We probably have to refresh, right? Yep, you'll have to refresh. Uh, you'll have to refresh. Do we have to make it recent? Yeah, there's one. So the only thing is, you have to probably go to your You'll have to change your share setting, and you'll have to share it. Um, to anyone that Google apps or I don't know if it's a link. One way that you can make 
One other thing you can do is with any of the content pages, there's an option on the bottom to set it up so that only the instructor can edit it or that students can edit it as well. So if you wanted to create a page for every group so that the students in that group had control over that, it basically it turns it into a wiki. And then they can create, you know, you can have seven topics um, and every two weeks have somebody have a group build that topic in Canvas <laughs> present it and you know have the students actually create the pages. Yeah. Yeah, and your page has to have an image and a video and step by step. And this yeah. is a good way to have the students actually create content for you so that next year you have more examples of whatever that content is. And so it's less work for you. They won't be great again necessarily, but you can tweak it sometimes and then they feel like they're helping to build sort of the program. One other thing about groups is that in discussions, if you're not in a group and you're a student, it's really hard to add an image. It's complicated because you can't, you don't have the upload function of adding images. If you give students a group, when they're in the group, they have the same privileges that an instructor has. Now, this is kind of a weird thing. Instructors have better image upload options than students for some reason in Canvas. But if you give the students a group, then in those group discussions, they will have basically instructor privileges. So it will be a little bit less clunky for them. OK. Well, I will be respectful of your time. We've got about five minutes left. So if you would like, I would love for you to fill out this evaluation for today. Um, and thank you so much for coming. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, I'll be sticking around for a while. Otherwise, everybody get home before this all turns into ice. So. <laughs> on today's home, excuse thank me. So on, much. on today's homepage, the overview page, I added in a link that says notes from today's session. So that has links to the articles that you read today. It has links to um, a, a shorter summary of those articles extra resources, things like that. I believe that she can show it to you right now. Right here? Yeah, right there. And it's a shared Google Doc, so all of the links you can click on and access.